What's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. I'm sure you guys have heard now about the massive Chinese booster rocket that's orbiting the Earth uncontrollably right now, expected to re-enter the atmosphere sometime on July 31st, best guess scenario. Somewhere out over the ocean, we're looking at a possible re-entry of the 25-ton, 50,000-pound rocket booster, possibly over the, the North Central Atlantic Ocean. Anywhere you see here on the daylight, side of the earth involving Africa, all of Europe, and the Indian Ocean, Western Australia. This is the orbital path of the rocket booster, and more than likely it could come into Earth's atmosphere anywhere in this area you see right here. This would be the, the daylight side of the earth. This is a prediction, a forecast that, that can and will change because this is an uncontrolled re-entry, so nobody knows the exact location or the exact time this very large piece of space debris is going to be re-entering Earth's atmosphere, but it's going to be soon. They're anticipating less than a week, sometime possibly around July 31st. I'm sure as most of you guys have also heard about the, the large 7.0. It's been downgraded from a 7.3 to a 7.0 magnitude earthquake in the northern Philippines. This earthquake was very shallow, coming in at 6.2 miles deep, and it was felt on seismographs all around the world. You can see the seismograph here in the Philippines. This was from a, a few hours ago and it's still pretty much jet black. And you can also see other seismographs around the world that detected the primary wave and they too are black, but not quite as black as the one you see in the Philippines that was closest to the epicenter of the very large earthquake. But look at this one here in South Dakota of all places, 7,000 miles away, actually 7,400 miles away if you fly over the top of the Earth. This one here was also jet black, like the one that was close to the epicenter of the very large earthquake. Coming over here to Google Earth, here's where the epicenter of the earthquake was at in the northern Philippines. And we're going to take a straight line across the top of the Earth over here to South Dakota, right over there, 7,400 miles away. And it too was absolutely jet black. And some of the other ones that were 7,000, 8,000 miles away, look at Greenland, you can see it also detected a dark signature, but not near as black as Venezuela or South Dakota. Baja California, that's been like that for a while. Puerto Rico picked up the, the primary wave. It too showed the, the earthquake, but was not quite jet black like you saw up there in South Dakota. And that is a mystery. Don't know why it showed up like that. All the other seismographs reflected a large earthquake like you see typically when a 7.0 magnitude earthquake occurs pretty much anywhere on Earth that had that little depth. That was a very shallow earthquake, once again coming in at 6.2 miles deep, followed by multiple aftershocks. There were eight aftershocks, anywhere from 4.7 to 5.2. All right here in this area of the northern Philippines. I wanted to take you guys over to another location that's of interest right now, and that's in the, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico area. And you can see now now that these earthquakes are starting to extend down to the, the greater Antilles, these islands down here in the southern Caribbean. And I want to take you guys over here to Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic and look at all the, the earthquakes that have occurred just in the last 30 days. And this has been going on for several weeks, in fact, several months in this area. Started out down here in southwestern Puerto Rico, and I've been following this earthquake swarm for a long time. I don't report on it every day because there's not been any major earthquakes in this area. They're starting to spread out over towards the Dominican Republic from this area right here off the southwestern coast of Puerto Rico. And you can see now there was a, a 4.2 down here in the, the Greater Antilles and yet another earthquake down here of, of moderate magnitude, a 4.5. And, and you don't normally see earthquakes down here in this area, even though there's a fault line a few miles away. To have earthquakes that close to the, the islands there is kind of rare. You don't really see earthquakes in that part of the world. But there's been an ongoing swarm here off the southwestern coast of Puerto Rico and the, the earthquakes are spreading out. So there's something going on here. It's almost like the, the earth is expanding or something in this area. There's been perpetual movement now for the last several months in this area. Once again, off the, the southwestern coast of Puerto Rico, the earthquake swarm seems to be gaining momentum. There's more earthquakes in this area and they seem to be gaining strength. You see more in the, the three and four range. And when these started out several months ago, most of these were in the two range. Once again, located 
just off of the southwestern coast of Puerto Rico. But again, they're spanning out to the to the north and to the south right now as I do this video. I want to take you guys now over to the homepage of the website, looking at the Schumann resonance, that background noise that we've been seeing now that's occurring at the same time in the 15, 16, 17 universal time. Showed up again today on the 27th. It was there yesterday on the 26th, and we'll see if it shows up again tomorrow. Hopping over to the Yellowstone Supervolcano Caldera, looking at the seismographs that monitor the mighty supervolcano. The seismograph in the southeastern quadrant of the, the supervolcano is still showing all red vertical lines, or at least an abundance of, of red vertical lines. And now you're looking at horizontal dark lines at the bottom of the graph. That represents earthquake activity. This has been going on now for over a week at the Promontory Seismograph at the Supervolcano Caldera. You can see there was some earthquake activity. That was the 7.1 that was detected by some of the seismographs up here at the, the Supervolcano Caldera, but not all of the seismographs. So once again, unusual activity persists in the southeastern quadrant of the Supervolcano Caldera. Coming over here to nullschool.net, checking out the Sahara Sand situation. You can see yet another giant plume is making the 4,000 mile journey across the Atlantic over to the, the Gulf of Mexico and the Southern Caribbean. This is known as the, the MDR, the Main Development Region, during hurricane season in the Northern Hemisphere. But as long as we have these large sand plumes out here, there's probably not going to be any hurricanes in this part of the world. They're all forming now over here in the Eastern Pacific in the very warm waters off the coast of Central America and Mexico, and they're heading up to the north, northwest, and they're not making landfall, which is a good thing. They are moving heat away from the equator, but we need some activity over here to move heat away from the equator in the Central Atlantic Ocean. But as long as there's this dust plume, once again, that makes the environment very unfavorable for the formation of hurricanes. And coming back over to the homepage of the website, feature photo today was sent in by Erica H. out of Mattoon, Illinois, of what looks like a, a big giant pink gateway in the sky above Mattoon, Illinois. Great job, Erica. Thanks for sharing. If you guys have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at Mr. MBB 333.com. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.